So Rosie's had her pre-med. Now we're going to give her uh, what's called the induction agent. So that's the one that's going to anaesthetise her. So what we do, clip a little bit of hair up off the leg. Good girl, Rosie. So that we can find the vein that's on the front of the arm. And what we're going to do, we're going to pop a catheter into that vein in the front of the arm. So Sarah's just holding that vein up for me, and so it's just sitting up there on the front of Rosie's, uh, Rosie's leg. So we pop the catheter in. So it's the tiniest little pinprick that they feel. And that's the painful part done. We tape it in because it's always heartbreaking once you get the catheter in and then you uh, dog moves and the catheter comes out, it's in your hand and you go, oh bother, now I need to do it again. Thankfully that hasn't happened on the video, so that's good. Pop a little injection port in, just that way we can give her the induction agent. Alright, so now we're ready to rock. Hey, get on your Rosie, see on the other side darling. Alrighty. So this is the induction agent that we use. It's called Alfaxan. So we just give a little bit to effect at the start. And clean up the mess so the nurses don't yell at me. All right, so Rosie will just start getting sleepy. Good girl, Rosie. Good girl, I know. I know it's the first time I've done this to you, isn't it? Hey. Christina has you. This is the first time I've knocked you out. Oh my goodness. Good girl. Good girl. So sometimes they feel a bit, a bit disoriented as they're going down under the anaesthetic. Oh darling, I know. I know you're feeling woozy, aren't you? Yeah. So we just give it a little bit more to affect. And we're just trying to get it to the point where then we can pass a, uh, a tube down into her airway that's then going to give her the anaesthetic. Good girl, Good girl darling. I know. Hey. Feeling a bit funny, little Rosie. Good girl, swing back this way. Good, good girl. Good, good girl. So I'll give that another few seconds and see if she's going to be deep enough so that then we can. Uh, so then we can intubate her. Good girl. Still a little light, I'll give you a little bit. So, what I'd like to do to measure up what size tubes we use, I measure it up to their nose. And it sort of fits in about in there, then hopefully it should be alright. Seven, seven and a half is going to be what we're after. Probably get a seven down there, hey Rosie? Alright, so you can see her eyes are flicking there. She's not feeling this anymore, she's under the anaesthetic, but it's just whether or not she's deep enough. But then we can get the tube in. No, she's still a little light, so we'll grab a little bit more, I think. And so if we weren't to be giving Rosie the anaesthetic gas, she'd wake up pretty quickly because this Alfaxan induction agent works very fast. So sometimes we use it just on IV for IV sedation, so just if we're going to do something really, really quick, like you know, pulling out a quick grass seed or taking off a broken nail or something like that. tube down into the throat, down into, into her larynx there, and we tie it in, okay, and so this is just a reaction of her body from having something down in her airway, pop her on the anaesthetic gas, 
Puff the cup up. Very good. And that's how we do it. That's how we do it. That's how we anaesthetise a dog. So we're just going to let, let Rosie get a little bit deeper now. Then what we're going to do, we need to actually need to x-ray Rosie. So we're going to x-ray her first, then we're going to bring her over and do a dental. And that's when uh, we'll start playing again and show you how we do a dental. So yeah, see so how we go. Rock and roll? Yep. Excellent. Alrighty. So we've taken Rosie's x-rays. So now we're going to get in clean her teeth. What we do, we pop a swab down the back of the throat, try and stop fluid from going down there. And we use this, which is an ultrasonic scaler, similar to what human dentists use to go in there and try and clear off all the uh, all the tar that's stuck to the teeth. And uh, because, unfortunately for Rose, because she's owned by a very negligent vet, she does have a reasonable amount of tar. So sometimes we use these as well, which are tartar extractors, uh, which just help to clear the most of the stuff off. Good stuff. Um, and could you grab the pole socks and things like yeah. that too, please, Sarah? Thank you very much. All right, so that beeping you heard there is what's called the app alert. So that's the thing that we use to try and check their uh, check their breathing. So I've gone and chipped the most of the tartar off. You see under there, tooth looks pretty good. So we use our ultrasonic scaler. Then come and scale off all of that tartar. And get down under the gums as well. We try and do every surface of every tooth. Not sure where it's going to come out on the video, but you can see there's a little bit of flattening of this tooth here. Rosie's a chronic ball chaser, um, which given that my son is a chronic ball thrower, is a match made in heaven, um, apart from, of course, for Rosie's teeth. But that's cool. Like we see it in Border Collies all the time, the flat teeth. They come in where they're ball mad as well, and they come in and all of their teeth are just flat, like you can put a ruler along, along them. Um, and it's fine, it's fine, it happens gradually, so the, the body has ways of being able to cover over the pulp cavity. So you see here we're getting a little bit of bleeding on this gum, which is fine. That's just where you've got a little bit of infection on there. From the tartar being there, we still get in there and clear that out. That bleeding stops, no problems. Clear off all this tartar off this lower molar. And go and get in around on the inside of the tooth too. Excellent. I will clean up and see how we're looking. I'm going to come in and get a little bit more. Sometimes you get a little, get some dogs. I had a dog that I did a dental on today. A gap between this fourth premolar. And the back molar here was pretty tight. Got a bit of tart, a bit of gum recession. Let's get some grooves here. Try and clean those out. Excellent. All right, onto the top teeth. Come around to this third. Start at the first incisor. We often see dogs with bad incisors if they like to chew their feet. So dogs that have allergies or fleas. We'll often see that they, they get hair caught around the roots of these teeth and get marked gum recession and marked infection. And that's often where a lot of the bad smell comes from. Um, now Rosie, interestingly, has got a bit of recession on the back of her canine here. She's lost a little bit of the enamel, the, uh, the nice shiny white stuff on the outside here. She's got a little bit of goo and debris there. Just shut her mouth up and see where that might be coming from. Doesn't look like it's interacting from any of her teeth, so again, maybe that's something she's getting from when she's um, grabbing things around the house. Not that she's grabbing anything bad, you know, probably just kids' toys, maybe footy cards, that'd be good. Good if she grabs some footy cards, Ruben would be very disappointed, but anyway. Sometimes we see dogs get this if they um, if they chew at the gates, you know, if they've got a bit of separation anxiety. So again, so you can see how that uh, how that tartar sort of melts away in the face of the uh, ultrasonic scaler. The 
the other beeping that you hear in the background is uh, what's called the pulse oximeter. And so what that does is that checks the oxygenation of Rosie's blood and also her heart rate. So we've always got a nurse uh, monitoring all of their anaesthetics. And the machines that go ping help them to uh, keep an eye on what's going on as well. And can alert them before there's a too big a problem. So again, as you can see underneath where that tartar was, tooth pretty good. So once we've gone and cleaned them all up, I'm going to grab our, uh, our depth probe and go in and check for gum recession. So then that way we can keep an eye on any teeth or any pockets that might be causing her some issues in the future. I'm just going to try and get this cheeky little one up the back up here, the second molar. Just pop a gag in her mouth to get this one. See, do you want to turn it down to two, please? She's just a little bit scary. There we go, cooking now. See, the second little molar up here is sometimes a little bit cheeky. Pardon the pun, given that it hides up in the cheek. So again, this little bit of gingival bleeding, that's fine, that'll settle down, no problemo. Get up in there, clean all in there, check the rest of them out, check the in, uh, this little cheeky little bit inside here, inside the inside of the molar. There you go in there, see, you all happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bring her up a bit. Yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah, she's there. Yeah, the heart rate's going up though, so I'm only going to pop her up a little bit. Alright, so I'm just going to come in here and get some of the insides of the bottom teeth, just make my life a little bit easier. This is always the hardest bits of the teeth to get to when uh, when they're awake. You just can't see in here, you've got tongues and dogs generally don't like you going to the inside of their teeth. Usually it means that you're trying to give them a tablet or something like that or you're trying to choke them. So much easier to see when they're asleep like this. Alright, you can see up here the inside of this fourth upper premolar. We've got a little bit of tartar up here on the inside section. So go in there and give that a clean up while we're on this side too. So we always try and make sure we move from tooth to tooth, so you might see me go back to other teeth again after having finished with them. It's just because you don't want to have the, uh, the scaler on the, uh, on the tooth for too long. Too much vibration is not good for blood vessels and nerves and stuff. And so you can see that there's water coming out of the... Uh, Scaler. That's there to help to keep everything cool and gets too hot. Again, it can cook tissue. And that ain't good. All right. So, they all look pretty good and clean now. Happy days. All right, so. Grab my little probe. Probe for my probe. Probe for my probe. Probe, here we go. So there, again, same thing as what the dentist used. So we just go around here and we just have a look and see how deep the uh, the gum recession goes through down through. So, so for the most part, it looks like Rosie's sitting at about threes for those, two for that one two for there, and getting down to about two and a half around there, about these ones, two and a halfies, that's good, down here, oh, less than one, that's good, twos, 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 and getting down to threes on that canine, how about on the inside, twosies, nothing on the inside, nothing on the inside there, 
nothing on the inside of these. I'm just going to do these ones here just because make again nice so easy doing it from inside. Twos. So I'm going to record this all down on our history. So it means that the ones we really need to watch for is here the three mil ones that we've got around in this canine and the three mil ones we've got up the back up here. But that's cool, that's not too disastrous. Oh, we've just got a little bit of tartar still on the front of this canine. Excellent, happy days, rightio. Now, polishy time. So, got this stuff called Profi Paste. We use an oscillating, uh, oscillating little cup on, just to help to try and make lots of noise. Which it does very well. And helps to try and get rid of any of the little grooves that we've put on there from the scaling. Again, same thing as what you set get with your human dentist. So and then, because we can't offer her a cup, cheers, thanks guys, to rinse and spit, we do it for her. But given that Rosie's a whippet and she's incredibly skinny and it's a pretty chilly time in the middle of June, left her coat on it to help to try and keep her nice and cool. Right, there we go, flush. Now, we pull out our little swab out the back of her throat. And we put a freshie in. And then we roll her so that we can do the other side. You right to go, Sam? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, unattach there. Okay, legs under on three. One, two, three. Oh, there you go, little rosy roo. There you go. No problems. Oh, well, that's it. Thanks, Ash. Watch the cranial trauma there, Ash. Okay, righty Ash. Now, here we go, cracking onto the other side. So, you can see we've got fairly similar sorts of signs on this side, too. This is the time where I look for my plaque removers. Oh yeah, thanks Sarah. Right, so. So I'm clip that all off there. Beautiful. Okay, right, now I go in there and start some scaling. So then the big question is, right, well, what am I gonna do for Rosie to try and stop her teeth from getting this tartary again? So that way I don't have to say to my kids, yeah, Rosie's gonna come back into work again. So what I'm gonna be doing is a combination of things. I'm gonna be using some, um, a dental diet. Uh, I like Hills TD, but uh, Royal Cannon Dental is, uh, is good as well. Um, I'm going to have that as the basis of her uh, of her diet because um, on the x-rays there weren't, wasn't really much in the way of signs of obvious arthritis and things like that so um, don't have to worry about having her any, on any other sort of specific diet so I'm going to use some TD. Um, I'm also going to be trying to brush her teeth too. Um, Rosie's not really much of a one for bones um, and bones are a bit of a bone of contention between vets as to whether to use or whether not to use. Um, some vets really love bones um, and yeah, you know, as long as you're choosing the right bones and they can help to keep the dogs clean, but there is a risk of breaking your dog's teeth, you know, I guess there's always risky things that can happen in your life, so it just may, depends on what you want to do to uh, have your risk. I don't really like giving rosy bones, so I don't give her bones. Um, so I'm going to be using a combination of brushing her teeth and the TD and we'll see whether or not we can help to keep these teeth clean. Rosie's eight now though and she's never had, her, never had to have her teeth cleaned before so there's some dogs that need to have their teeth cleaned fairly often. I had uh, two little dogs in um, to do dentals on this morning that I uh, had to do 18 months ago. Um, they're dogs that aren't good chewers either. So it varies, varies for different dogs. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to get you to give her a um, a Clavulox injection. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Point eight. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Point eight would be great. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. 
and just come and get that cheeky little second molar up here. The second molar was always a cheeky one, it's got these tiny little roots. It doesn't, because we've got tiny little roots, it doesn't take much tartar before it starts to get a little bit, uh, get a little bit lifty. So we do these procedures on our wet table, so then that way we can still have lots of uh, things to try and help to keep the dogs warm. We've got uh, three towels and a little hot water bottle under here for Rosie, helping to keep her warm. That means that all the liquid that we're producing, or that's coming from the scaler, can just go down into the uh, into the sink here, to our wet table. So how long have we been um, going for, Josie? What's the... 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes of dental time. So there you go, guys. So the answer to your question of how long will it take to uh, clean up your dog's teeth, it's just a scale and polish. 15 minutes. Sometimes it takes longer if there's um, really, really hard tartar or there's a lot of goo stuck in places that you've got to try and, uh, got to try and get out. It can take a little bit longer. Did you want to mention the antibiotics that Sarah gave? Oh yes, yeah. so, so just giving um, giving Rosie a little bit of antibiotics. I'm only going to have her on it for a few days. She won't need a lot of it, um, just a little bit, because her gums aren't terrible. But just where she's got that little bit of pocketing there, I just want to help to cover any secondary infection um, that could be there. Sometimes for dogs, if they've got much more severe infections, dental infections, we need to uh, treat for longer. Um, and we do have a really good long-acting antibiotic injection, but Rosie doesn't need that. She doesn't need to be on it for 14 days, so but we can use that for people when they flat out can't give their dogs medications. Let me jump in this here. Rosie, you have got the best teeth in the world now, Whippet. Nice one. All right, let's check the inside ones down here. They'll look pretty good. I've cleaned them up on the other side. How about that P4? Yep. So just here on this left upper P4, we're just going to come and get this little bit of... It's the tricky stuff that's hard to get from on the same side. Expert photography here by... Uh... Josie Jong, doing a great job. Oh, this seems to have a lot more grooves in the inside in here. More nooks and crannies. Harder to get it right out. The most important thing is that we clear it out from the gum line. So it's up at the gum line where the uh, bacteria are going to sit and cause gum recession, loosening off of the teeth. So uh, we've also got Rosie on a drip. We should probably talk about that. So we use IV fluids to help to try and maintain the dog's blood pressure. Helps to make the anaesthetics less risky. Helps them to uh, recover from the anaesthetic a lot quicker too. Uh, we usually keep them on a drip for... Uh, couple of hours afterwards then we take them off and take the catheter out you saw us put in before I always like to leave the catheter in so that if there's any problems then we've got IV access that we can get into straight away excellent fantastic uh, polishy polishy thank you very much Sarah okay. thank you So I'm probably not going to worry about trying to brush Rosie's teeth for a day. Give those gums a chance to try and settle down a little bit. But tomorrow I'm going to start brushing her teeth. She'll be on her normal food given that I haven't had to do any extractions.
fantastic. Flush, thanks, Sarah. And then Rosie is done. So you can go out. Thank you. So once we're done with the procedure, we turn the gas anesthetic off. And because it's a volatile uh, anesthetic agent, basically what she does, she just breathes it out. She just blows it straight off. And so what's going to happen, once we turn it off, she just starts to, uh, the concentration in her air, and therefore, uh, so I've just pulled the swab there out. Swab's out, Sarah. Thank you. What's going to happen is she's just going to slowly start to uh, blow out that gas. It's going to come out of her blood nice and slowly. She's going to get lots of oxygen, help to keep her blood uh, nice and oxygenated. She'll slowly wake up. They sometimes vocalise a little bit when they wake up because they feel a little bit, whoa, what's going on? Um, but otherwise, that's it. That's how we do a dental. So, uh, if you've got any questions or anything like that, send us an email, give us a call. Um, if you lift your dog's lip up and it looks a little bit dirty, a little bit gungy, then probably could do with a, um, a dental or at least even a check. So, um, if you're not sure, Bring them in, we can have a look, and if they need a clean up, we can let you know cost wise what it's going to be. Um, otherwise, uh, give you advice on how to keep your dog's teeth clean. Um, we'll put one on as she's waking up, too. So, excellent. So, here she is, Rosie. She's up, she's off her drip. She's been out for a little walk. Hi, Rosie. Come and have something to eat. So, she's feeling pretty good. She's a little slow, but she's, she's doing really, really well. Having some yummy breakfast. Good girl, Rosie. Look at those pearly whites poking out from between those gums. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Very, very good girl.